good morning, everyone, and good evening, wherever you guys are joining from. I know a few of my friends from China are joining in, so probably it's late night for them. Uh, anyways, thank, I, I welcome you all to a webinar, a uh, webcast, basically, <clears throat> for demoing Sumo. So my name is Tanush Vadhavan. I'm the director of Dynamita in the North America office. And today I'll be talking about Sumo, uh, some of the key features, and basically take you through the software. Um, what I would like to say is that in the, if you have a question during, any, uh, during the webinar, then please feel free to type it in the chat window. We have our team sitting and looking at the chat window constantly. And if, if, if they see your question, they would try to answer it right away so that we don't have to wait to answer all the questions towards the end. Uh, if, if in case we miss anybody, you can always free, uh, feel free to email us and I'll provide the email information towards the end of the slide. But <clears throat> when you guys registered, you guys must have seen the email uh, support at dynamita.com. All right, so a little bit of background about myself. Uh, I, <clears throat> I've been with Dynamita for over five years. I have experience in process modeling. I did my PhD and postdoc research at DC Water. My university was North Dakota State University, Fargo, North Dakota. So I, I was happy to get away from the snow and into nice DC to do my research. My research was on organic nitrogen, but being at DC Water, I was exposed to a lot of different projects. Uh, my focus during my postdoctorate was anaerobic digestion, thermal hydrolysis, uh, mostly related with CAMBI and startup of anaerobic digesters. Okay, so, so that's a little bit of background about myself. And, and before I begin, basically I would like to say that uh, these are some crazy times and hopefully everybody is staying safe and maintaining social distancing. All right, so today the purpose of the call will be, you know, to introduce you to Dynamita why are we different, what we do, uh, introduce you to Sumo, uh, introduce you to the key features, probably we'll go over to the software and show you how to build a simple BNR plant, look at an example of advanced controller. So basically we'll be talking about some new exciting features which we are in, going to include in Sumo as well in coming, coming months. Um, and then I would share a case study on uh, BioP performance. And then obviously question answers I kept for the last, but looking at how big the audience is, it might not be feasible to answer, open it up for question and answer towards the end. So that's why, <clears throat> just to remind you again, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to type it in the chat window. And one of my colleagues would be happy to answer your questions. Okay, so what you see on your screen right now is our Dynamita team. We are a team of 10 people. Uh, Imre Takas and Bernard Vett, they are the most experienced, obviously, our CEOs and vice president. They, they combined have an experience of over 70 years in process modeling and software development. Um, Sanderine is our administrative assistant. She keeps us on track. Uh, Jolt and Chaba are our programmers. Uh, basically, Jolt is responsible for the interface development and Chaba helps us with, with uh, <clears throat> translation uh, in, in programming. And both of them work really hard every day to incorporate our crazy ideas into the software. And, our, and then we have a team of five process engineers. What you see at the bottom is first one is Helen. She is an expert in model development. Then we have Ferry and Daniel. They are responsible for process unit development, controller development, um, aeration model development. Danny has extensive experience in industrial wastewater modeling as well. Uh, Peter Budai is one of our new team member who recently joined us. He is working on industrial wastewater treatment, library development, and what you see at the end is me. And this is probably one of uh, my photos from a couple of years ago. Uh, so we have a total of 10 people spread around the world. Uh, we have an experienced team. And because we are spread around the world, 
uh, we can provide round the clock support for our clients. Uh, me personally, I'm in uh, Toronto, like I said. Imri uh, and Helen are in France, along with Sandrine. Uh, Dr. Bernard is in uh, Austria, while the rest of our team is in Hungary. Okay, so what do we do? So we do, we, we are the developers of Sumo, which is one of the advanced wastewater treatment full featured software. Uh, then we also provide trainings, obviously for a software, uh, being able to use Sumo, we provide training for model developers. If they're interested in developing their own modules, we provide training for process modeling and operators as well. Apart from training and software, we also provide services such as process modeling, energy modeling, sewer modeling, control implementations, uh, model development. We have been involved in a lot of industrial and municipal projects with our tech, uh, technology providers to develop uh, their technologies in Sumo. And then we also provide R&D support. Uh, <clears throat> we also do digitalization services. Uh, digital Twin is something which is a new service which we have started providing where you can link Sumo directly to your OPC servers and control your plant. Um, and then obviously we provide data analysis and automation. So now where do we support? Uh, you can use Sumo or our services during a project bidding phase for preliminary evaluation of a design, uh, during a design phase, startup phase, operational optimization, plant upgrades, R&D and piloting. And we have been involved in a lot of these type of projects with many of our clients. Okay, so just to, just a few list of clients which you see on your screen. We have many different partners in our utilities, in consulting firms, and manufacturing, uh, basically technology providers. Okay, so now we would start getting into Sumo. Here I would uh, walk you through a few of the key features uh, of Sumo, which I would like users to learn. And then we would move on to the interface and uh, we'll, we'll create an example. So just to begin with, uh, we have an extensive list of process unit library. We, have, we can characterize them in four major categories, bioreactors, flow elements, separators, and special units. Under bioreactors, we have many types of bioreactors, for example, CSTR, we have plug flow segment and plug flow. Uh, the plug flow uh, segment and plug flow reactor, basically process units allows you to input any number of cells you want. So it helps you uh, <clears throat> consolidate a big plant into a simple process schematic. We have SBR, biofilm model, we have MBBR, anaerobic digesters, we have MABR, which is a membrane aerated biofilm reactor. We have granular sludge. We have two types of granular sludge models. Uh, then we have crickling filter and membrane bioreactors. So these, this is the list of our bioreactors. Then we have flow elements such as influent, chemicals. We have a big list of chemicals to choose from. We, we have a big list of metals you can choose from, carbon doses, uh, and so on and so forth. And then separators. We have all the type of separators one would need to make a configuration. So from screens to disc filters, uh, primary grease trap, uh, dissolve air filtration, and so on. We also have cyclone. And then uh, in, under special units, we have thermal hydrolysis process. So a key point to know here is that each image has multiple model options to choose from. Um, and any number of configurations can be created using these uh, process units. Uh, we also have a sewer model library and a mobile carrier model library, which is available on request. So the mobile carrier model library is where the biofilm model, uh, where the media actually floats from one reactor to the other and even settles and can be recycled back. And this can have many advantages and applications. So if you, if you need any of the additional li libraries, just feel free to email us and ask us. Okay. Um, 
Now, I would like to uh, highlight an important uh, selection point for our model. You know, whenever we are doing model uh, modeling, we, we would try to pick reactors. And, and it's important to identify the dissolved oxygen model, which is behind a reactor. In a lot of simulators, I've noticed you can either choose a input DO reactor or a calculated DO reactor. Uh, an input DO reactor or a model is where dissolved oxygen is the set point in the model. So you would provide a DO set point and the aeration model behind, behind the unit calculates what the airflow should be. While a calculated DO model is where you would provide the airflow rate and the aeration model is calculating what the dissolved oxygen is in that particular tank. Now, these two are very important models to distinguish because if, if we look at this particular example, what you see on your screen is a MLE example with the primary clarifier. MLE because it has an anoxic tank followed by an aerobic tank with an internal recycle. And then you have a clarifier bringing back the RAS sludge to the anoxic zone. Now, what happens in MLE uh, plant is with the aerated sludge in the aerobic zone is being bought, brought back to the anoxic reactor, it contains high amount of oxygen. So in this particular example, the internal recycle was set to 3Q, meaning the internal recycle is three times the influent. And the oxygen mass which is being bought back is 216 kilograms per day. In this example, we have the aerobic reactor as input DO with a DO set point of three milligrams per liter. Now, anoxic reactor, you can choose either an input DO or a calculated DO reactor. So, so this is an important feature that you can either choose one or the other in combination and all the reactors don't have to be either calculated or an input DO. But why is input DO and calculated DO important when it comes to anoxic reactors? The important point here is whenever you choose an input DO reactor, so if you look at the first table, in this simulation, I had the anoxic reactor as an input DO. So I was forcing the DO to be zero. Uh, if you look at the table right here, the, the, the red box, the oxygen uptake rate is obviously zero because I'm forcing that reactor to be zero. That means it doesn't take into consideration any oxygen which might be bleeding in with the aerated sludge which is being brought back in the internal recycle. And, and what is the if impact? It impacts your effluent quality directly. So if you look at your total nitrogen in, in this simulation, it's 7.9 milligrams per liter. If you look at the bottom screen, where the only difference is that I'm using a calculated DO reactor, you see that there is oxygen be, being bought, brought back and being used in oxygen uptake rate. And the total nitrogen is actually 21% higher. So for all anaerobic and anoxic tanks, it's important to use calculated DO so that you can truly understand the impact of oxygen and you don't over design your facility. So that's one important point. And you can mix and match both calculated DO and an input DO in one configuration. You don't have to be set to one specific model. Okay, so moving on, um, we have a flexible model selection option. We have many different options to choose from. So you can choose a simple model or a complex model based on your need. We have one-step nitrification denitrification model, which, is, uh, which means that in this model, we don't have AOBs and NOBs as separate organisms, but one as nitrifiers. So you would have ammonia to nitrate conversion. Now we also have an option of selecting two-step nitrification denitrification. And this is where we have uh, ammonia oxidizing bacteria and nitrite oxidizing bacteria. And you have, oops, and you have conversion of ammonia to nitrite and nitrite to nitrate. So where does this model come in handy is when you're trying to simulate, let's say shortcut, shortcut nitrogen or deammonification, because nitrite is an intermediate. We also have NMOX as part of the model. Uh, our, 
recently we have improved our BioP model. It is one of the most advanced models which you will find out there. Uh, it was developed from a uh, research funding which was supported by Water Research Foundation. It's a two PAO GAO model. Uh, the, it is very useful for doing side stream BioP performance. And in, in this model, basically, at PAOs become ferment, uh, uh, PAOs can ferment when the ORP reaches a very low level of concentration, which is an important requirement for, for, for an improved performance of certain configurations. We also have a sulfur model and, a, and an EPS, carbon-based EPS model, where you can uh, produce, uh, look at EPS production throughout the plant. Okay. Uh, one can decide to calculate off-gas composition, such as in digesters, or if you're looking to compare aeration off-gas measurements. But in case you don't have digesters in your configuration and you're not concerned about aeration off-gas, then you can keep the calculate off-gas option on off. Uh, you have an option of switching on the pH. And when you switch on the pH, you the pH impacts the rates. So you can understand the impact of poor pH and alkalinity in your influent on your plant. You can use it for estimating alkalinity demand. And when it comes, comes to precipitation, we have a, a lot of different kind of precipitate models, uh, precipitants, which are included in our model. So such as Vivianite, Struvite, iron sulfide, calcium carbonate, and amorphous calcium phosphate. And these are very important when it comes to simulating the digester performance. Uh, one key feature of Sumo is that we are open process source, and that's our philosophy as a company as well as Dynamida. Uh, <clears throat> what does open process source mean? So this means that all the models, and the, including the process units and the biokinetic metrics, is open for public to see, is open for users to see and touch. And what this does is this allows you to improve your in-house knowledge for improving your competitive edge in the industry. Uh, all the model structures are actually simple to read because they're, they are built in Excel. And you can build actually your own process modules. You can customize them for your clients. And we have many clients for whom we have done this. And there are many clients who have chosen to develop their own process library as well. For, for supporting their clients. Um, we have a very unique and modern uh, interface where we can do plant-wide calculations. Now, plant-wide calculations are basically calculations which are not limited in, in specific process units, but involve multiple process units in a plant. So for example, uh, the sludge retention time. The sludge retention time is mass of sludge sitting in, in the tanks uh, uh, divided by the mass of sludge leaving uh, the process, right? Uh, there might be RAS calculations where the RAS actually depends on the influent flow. Um, the internal recycle, which I just showed in an example previously, where the internal recycle is dependent on the influent flow. So these kind of calculations are basically what we call plant-wide calculations. So one such example of how to put them together is shown in the slide, what you see. Uh, this is an A2O plant. In, in this A2O plant, we would, if, if we wanted to create an SRT calculation, we would go to the plant-wide tab, click on the sludge retention time, and then an equation window will show up where all you have to do is drag and drop the specific units you would want to calculate, to be involved in the calculation for that sludge retention time. So in this case, we drag and drop all the three reactors. And at the bottom, what we drag and drop is this wastage pump, which defines the SRT. And you can also drag and drop the effluent unit because the TSS in the effluent can impact your SRT. So you can uh, customize this equation in a way your plant is actually calculating the SRT. Now, not only you can calculate the SRT, you can actually control the SRT from this, this window as well. 
So if you see, there is a check button uh, on the left hand side. So if you check, check target SRT and write, let's say five days of SRT, then what Sumo will do is it will control the flow to match the target SRT so that users don't have to go through a tedious exercise of identifying a flow to maintain their target SRT. So this can be automated. Okay. Now you can't have just one SRT. Some plants do total SRT calculation uh, for uh, operational purposes, but then they also want to know what their aerobic SRT is. And in this case, you can create multiple SRT calculations in Sumo for the same configuration. So you can create an aerobic SRT like I did right here. You can just select the mass of sludge sitting in an aerobic tank just by dragging and dropping the aerobic tank. And then similarly, you will do, do the wastage and effluent. Now, because you have the total SRT um, as the set uh, target SRT to control the wastage, you cannot have uh, two places where you can control the SRT. So one SRT can be used to control one train of the plant. But if you had multiple trains, then both trains can be uh, used to control two different SRTs because it will involve two different wastage pumps. Okay, um, one important feature of Sumo is the controllers. Now, controllers are not a separate package, but they're included in the basic Sumo package which one gets. So it's not an additional add-on which you can buy, but it's already part of the package which you get. And we have uh, a complete library of controllers. On the left, you see we have five types of controllers. We have continuous P controller where, where the, uh, it's integrated. We have a PID controller, which is a discrete controller. We have time based on and off controller. We have a ratio controller and a dead band controller. Now, like I said, the controllers are included in the package you can create any number of controller configurations like cascade controller, feed forward, feed backward. You can control any kind of control, implement any kind of control logic for SRT control, for ammonia-based aeration control, for DO control, controlling your internal recycles, vast rates, controlling a ratio of ammonia to nitrate or oxygen uptake rate in a tank. And the controllers are actually set up in a similar way like you would do an SRT calculation. But uh, what I mean by that is in, in the user interface window. So you would click on the type of controller you want. The controller shows up uh, in the interface. And then you are allowed to drag and drop the process units, basically, which are being used, which are part of the control logic. and and here you need to know two important things. A controller requires manipulated variable and a control variable to be identified. In this case, what we are saying is a, a control variable, which let's say is ammonia, is present in the effluent of the plant because that's where our probe is. Now, if the probe was in an aerobic tank, you can always uh, click on the reactor and drag and drop your reactor where it says control variable. And on the left hand side, you would define where your manipulated variable is situated. So in this case, we are saying that our manipulated variable is in the aerobic tank. Uh, so we drag and drop our manipulated variable process unit. But where do we define the effluent uh, variable and the variable which we are trying to change? that happens on the left hand side so if you see there is a control variable with a drop down list in a control variable drop down list we have selected ammonia so ammonia in this effluent process unit is basically our control variable and manipulated variable is dissolved oxygen in this process unit this aerobic tank and this is a simple way of setting up a controller. Now, this would be a ammonia-based aeration controller, a simple example. 
In Sumo, you have an option of changing dynamically a lot of different variables. There is no limitation on what one can do. To create a dynamic table, it's quite simple. In an Excel, you would create a table, what you see uh, on the top right-hand side. So the first cell always needs to be the time. And then the second cell on the first row can be the variable name. And the second row is always the units. So for time, you can have hours, a minutes, days, whatever you would like uh, in the variable names. And the units are the specific symbols which you need to identify from the interface. And when we do an example, I will walk you through how one can do that. Uh, so basically, you create a table in Excel. You can copy and then paste in Sumo. You can dynamically change variables such as uh, fractions of ammonia to TKN. Now, this is not very common in a lot of simulators uh, where you would just set the ammonia to TKN fraction to a one particular value. And, and then you would dynamically change either the flow or the TKN. However, we now know that the ammonia to TKN fraction also changes in, um, during a, even during a day. And that can be very important when simulating the BNR performance. You can set different schedules to repeat if you would like. So for example, if you are doing, if you add a diurnal flow of 23 hours to your, uh, to your influent, you can set a schedule to repeat for every 24 hours so that that input is used every 24 hours. That cycle is repeated. You can add as many number of tables as you want. You can add as many variables as you want or timestamps time, time as you want. You can also le do linear interpolation of if the, excuse me, if the big chunk of data is missing. And that can be a very unique and uh, advantageous feature. Okay. Another important feature I would like you guys to know is the scenario analysis functionality. Here in, in Sumo, uh, you can, in one single file, you can run many scenarios so that you don't need multiple model files. So it, when, when we go to Sumo, I'll, I'll do an example to show you how we create. But basically what ends up happening is what you see on your screen. So you get a window in your simulate tab where if you see, I have highlighted two uh, scenarios, winter and summer. So in winter, I can change, set the temperature to 10 degrees. So not only the influent, but I can change, let's say settings in the reactor as well. So in the, re in, in the aerobic tank, my volume is 4,500 cubic meters. But during the summer, maybe there, there was one train which was offline. So you can see I can simulate that scenario by just changing the tab within the tabs. I'm able to save these plant conditions and then load them back. So you don't have to rerun them every time. Okay, another important feature of Sumo is that the reports which are generated, they're quite extensive and they, com they, they have a complete picture of what you did simulate and and the report is created in excel so it contains information regarding uh the file name the project the date it was reproduced the version of sumo it was used what model it was was used how it was last run to get the data uh we have notes and comments which show up in the uh, excel report all the measured and imported data shows up and all the plots so you have ability to customize this Excel report once you have it uh, for your clients for analysis purposes. So apart from, you know, user interface, we provide Excel tools with Sumo, which are part of the Sumo, which helps you uh, do some data analysis, identify appropriate inputs to the model. So one of the tools is the Influent tool. This is our Influent fra Fractionator. So on regular basis, a plant is not measuring uh, the fractions which are involved in an influent or which are useful for a model. 
So typically plant would measure, measure TSS, VSS, BOD, total COD maybe, uh, TKN, ammonia, TP, and OP. And you can use all this information. You can put it in this Excel. You can estimate the correct fractions and then the fractions can be used to run the model file. So Influent tool can be a very powerful um, Excel tool to use before you set up a plan for data analysis and to identify the correct fractions. The second important tool is the aeration tool where you provide, let's say, air airflow per diffuser, standard oxygen transfer efficiency, and then you can estimate the calibrated parameter for the aeration model, if that's what you're looking to do. But apart from these two, we also have uh, oxygen uptake rate data processor as an Excel tool. We provide an Excel tool for estimating the influent biomass using oxygen uptake rate. We provide a tool you can use for understanding the impact of industrial wastewater on the nitrification growth rate if you have the data for it. And we have a tool for estimating the true dynamic SRT. Okay, um, another interesting feature of Sumo is that Sumo is quite flexible. It, what I mean is that you can, we have a Sumo OPC, Open Platform Communication uh, UA interface. It can be set up on a server and it communicates with, with your server for, for your, to get information from your plant. And then can, you can run Sumo on your server and get outputs which can be used to operate your facility. So one example is where the influent flow and COD and ammonia load from the OPC server will go to the Sumo uh, where you have set up and calibrated your plant. The plant will run automatically. It will give you an output of dissolved oxygen set point, for example, and then that can be used in the controller to control the performance. We also have an operator-friendly interface for operator training for improving their understanding of your process model and the operation. And, and this is also present as part of the Sumo package. Okay, so before we go to the interface, I would like to share a couple of uh, new features which we will be including in Sumo in, in coming few months. One is that we are introducing the energy demand calculator models, where you'll be able to calculate the total energy demand of your plant and energy production in case you have a CHP in your plant. So we'll have blower uh, energy calculator, we'll have a pump energy calculator, and then we'll have CHP energy calculator. And there are more details to which, which I won't get into, but, but basically we'll have a comprehensive uh, model library which will help one estimate the total energy demand of their plant. Uh, we, would be, we, we would be providing an automatic tool uh, where you can, instead of fishing out the data, creating tables and including it in the model for doing dynamic analysis, this will happen at the click of a button. So if you have a standard uh, way your utility or a data gets processed, we would be able to link using an Excel at a click of a button, which converts your regularly processed data into a format which can be used by Sumo. And then you can run Sumo and it'll create an Excel which uh, shows you the results and compares the data automatically. Uh, and finally, um, we are introducing a new service uh, this year. Uh, we're looking to introduce a new service this year. It's called Reactor Mapping Service. And basically here, what we would do is we would be, we would be using uh, operated vehicles equipped with water quality sensors, or you can co call them underwater drones. So we can throw these drones in your reactors or in the effluent discharge points to monitor the water quality either inside your tanks or at your discharge point to get a profile of your reactor uh, and, and we would be able to measure dissolved oxygen, nitrate, pH, ORP, ammonia. And this can help understand your plant performance, um, your specific to processes. And then we would be able to link that to Sumo so that we can create compartmentalized models 
for your, for your plan, for process understanding. Okay, so at this point, we would go over to Sumo. So the goal would be to set up a simple MLE example and probably we will look at how a controller example is set up. I hope everybody still sees my screen. Okay, so now we are in the Sumo interface. Um, what you can see is the Sumo interface. This is the first uh, window you would see whenever you open Sumo. Um, on the left hand side, you see we have project management. We have a lot of documentation um, you can go through. So I would recommend you going through all the documentation we have and that will improve your understanding and familiar. You will be more familiar with a lot of user user friendly features Sumo has. Uh, we have a small document for frequently asked questions, a quick tutorial, we have the manual and the book of Sumo Slang. And on the left hand side, on the bottom, you have support information and then it also tells you when your license is going to expire. On the right hand side, you see we have two windows which shows you recent projects one must be working on and a big list of examples. So you can see Sumo is split into four windows. For examples, I would say we have many different configurations already laid out. So I would recommend uh, sometimes after this call, you can go through the list of examples we have. You can open them up and see how different process configurations are set up. So Sumo is actually, you can see, is split into these four windows. And these four windows can, the size of the four windows can be adjusted by clicking on the, on the center to, to get whatever you want so that you are comfortable using the interface. On the top, you see that we have different tabs you can choose from. Sumo is a task-oriented, tab-oriented, uh, flow based simulator, which means that, you know, in a modeling project, what you would do is you would configure the plan first and then you would decide, okay, which model to use. Uh, then you would decide, okay, what are the plant wide calculations I'm looking at? Identify inputs, you would identify outputs and then you'll do the simulation. So similarly, uh, this is how Sumo is set up. So first we would go to the configure tab. Configure tab is where you would basically configure your, pros, uh, your plant. On the left hand side, you would see that we have the list of process unit you can choose from. So here you see are the bioreactors, which I showed you in the PowerPoint. We have flow elements, separators and THP. In the bottom of the screen, you see I already created some notes for this, uh, for this uh, webinar, but you can, for every project, you can uh, include links for your PowerPoint. You can, you can copy photographs, images um, right here in the notes section, and that stays with the project. So when it comes to project delivery, when you're delivering the model to your client or for in-house use, you can keep record of when the model was built, how it was built, why it was built, and, and what kind of calibration you were trying to do. So if I click inside the note window, you would see I can zoom in, zoom out. I can do a lot of different stuff. Uh, I can make it bold. Uh, now, you see I have some instructions for myself. So for example, I'll build an MLE plant with primary treatment. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. So we'll go to the bioreactors and then we'll click on the CSTR and just without leaving our mouse, we'll drag it over to this drawing board. And this is an unlimited uh, drawing board. So you can have as big of a configuration as you want. You can zoom in, zoom out uh, so that you can um, customize it however you like. Uh, if you right click, on the process unit, you would see that we have many options. You can choose cut, copy, you can rename. So in this case, you can rename, you can show or hide the name if you don't like. You can delete 
Uh, you can disconnect the pipes if there were any pipes. You can rotate the unit. So for example, if I wanted to rotate this, I would anti-clockwise, I can just click and then you can see it rotating. Now, if I, if, if I want to be quicker, I can just click on the edge of the unit and I can make it like this. If I right click, you can see we also have rotate clockwise, mirror left and right, meaning you can switch the position, uh, mirror up and down, let's click on this. So you can see that it's switched. Now I can, I can bring it back if I want. Okay, so this is, these are some of the things you can do. If you click on the reactor, you see on the left hand side, there are many options which show up. You can see that there, there is a dissolved oxygen model option. And this is what we discussed. So you can choose either it being an input DO or a calculated DO reactor. You can choose from different aeration uh, models, such as diffused versus mechanical aeration. Uh, you can decide to have alpha as an input or calculated based on the mixed liquor with correlation. And then we have uh, many different type of diffuser system specifications to choose from. Okay, so this is our reactor. So if you look at this notes, we say, okay, we're gonna build an MLE plant and we, we need, so that means in an MLE plant, we need an anoxic tank and aerobic tank. So we need two tanks to go with. So I would drag and drop a second reactor. Now I need an influent. I would go to the flow energy elements. I would click on the influent and drag and drop. Now you see that when I have influent selected, on the left hand side, I have many different influent models to choose from. So just to the, so the important ones to focus for now is to decide what kind of influent type you will be using. Will it be the concentration based or mass flow based or state variable based? So the concentration based is where you would decide, de define the total COD, but you have to identify the particulate and biodegradable fraction or the VFA fraction of your RB or soluble component. The mass flow based is where you would define instead of total COD as concentration, you would define pound per, per day or kilograms per day. And then state variable based is an advanced option for users or people who know exactly what they have in their influence. So if they're, they're dealing with let's say a VFA, uh, ju just having VFA in their influent, then they can just choose a state variable where rest of the things are close to zero or non-detect and you can define VFA as 100 milligrams. Okay, so for now, I am interested in using concentration-based um, influent and I would like to define it on based on COD and not on based on BOD, so I would have this as my default. Okay, I need a clarifier. So because the MLE plant is with primary clarifier, I would need to drag and drop a primary clarifier from my separators. So I click on the primary clarifier, I drag and drop it right here. Again, on the left-hand side, you see we have many options to choose from. Obviously I won't get into each and every one with detail, but we can decide the model option based on hydraulics. So for example, if you're using a volume less point separator versus you want to use a layered flux model or a three compartment model, you can choose a model based on how you define your effluent specification, such as let's say if you wanted to do input percentage solids removal, or if you want to say that, okay, my primary effluent always has 40 milligrams per liter of TSS. So you can define uh, you can use a fixed effluent solids concentration and, and you'll be able to define that as the input. You can choose a model based on how you want to specify your underflow of your primary clarifier. You can choose from sludge concentration. In, if you input your sludge concentration, for example, 1% is the underflow sludge concentration, then the model 
calculates the flow. However, if you choose a sludge flow based option, then the model calculates the concentration based on the removal. So for now, I would select a percentage solids removal and solids flow would be the underflow. Okay. Um, what else do we need? We need a secondary clarifier. So similarly, I'll go back to separators and drag and drop my secondary clarifier right here. You can see we have similar options in secondary clarifier. Um, we have an additional option for final clarifier and an A stage clarifier. An A stage clarifier is a clarifier specifically with proper default settings and used to simulate high rate systems where when I mean high rate systems, I mean when the sludge retention time is very low in your process, less than one per day or two per day. So you can use a A stage clarifier to simulate the process. Okay, so right now we'll using a final clarifier. It has appropriate default settings. Uh, what else do we need? We need to be able to combine the primary to the uh, influent to the primary. If you bring your mouse to the influent, you will notice that we have an output port. So these round things we call our ports. So we have an output port and then in the primary, we have three ports. So the first port refers to input. The second is the effluent from the process unit. So the output port, and then we have a sludge port as well. So in a primary clarifier, obviously you have three ports. In a CSTR, you have two ports, meaning influent goes in and influent comes out. So the output port, okay. And one thing to remember is that the output port always connects to the input port. So what you can do is you can click on your influent and bring it closer to the port which you think would stick. And, and we call this a sticky port. So you can see auto automatically identified a connection and it was able to connect. If you right click on the pipe, you can provide a name to the pipe as well. So you can call it primary input. You can right click and show the name if you would like. You can right click, disconnect, and then now I'll show you a second way of making a connection. So you can click on the in output port. Without leaving your mouse, you see a red line shows up. If you bring it close to the port you want it to connect to, just drop it. And that would be, how, that's how you would make connections. Okay, so let's connect. Let's build a plant right here. Uh, the primary effluent will go into this reactor. Let's rename it to call it an anoxic reactor. And then we have anoxic reactor going into an anaerobic, the flow going into an anaerobic reactor. Oops, I have this left and right. So right here, I turn, I switch the image around. Output to an input and then output to an input of a clarifier. Okay, so this is how you would make connection. So, but in an MLE plant, you would know that we, we need to have an internal recycle. So how do we make an internal recycle? So we have two units called divider, which can be, which is basically a splitter of the flow. And then we have a combiner, which combines the flow. So I would zoom in a little bit right here. And if I bring my mouse, you would see that there is input right here to this port. There is pumped right here. So wherever there is this black triangle, it says it's pumped. And then the overflow is basically going straight. That's what the arrow represents. So which means that any flow coming in to this input tab, you would, in, in the input port, you would define how much of the flow is getting pumped right here. And then whatever's left over will go straight, will be the overflow. Uh, on the right hand side, what you see is a combiner. So you need in a combiner, what you're doing is you're combining two flows to get one stream coming out. 
So which means that you have two input ports. So input one, input two, and then you have an output port. Excuse me. So what do we need to do? So first we need to rename this tank to aerobic tank. And I need to split the flow from the aerobic tank and bring it back to the anoxic tank. So what I'll do is I will right click, disconnect, bring the side flow divider here and make this connection. I would click on the pumped and then I need to bring it back to this reactor. Now, what in, in Sumo, you can only connect one pipe to one port. So what you need to do is use a combiner. So I would right click, disconnect, bring the combiner right here. And I would bring the flow back. That's it. Now I can rename the side flow pump. I can call it an internal recycle pump. And now what's missing? Now we need to be bringing back the sludge as well to the anoxic tank. So similarly, what we'll do is we'll need a one more combiner and we'll need one more divider to represent our wastage. So you can see that the sludge needs to go into the input tab right here. So I would make that connection. I would right click and make mirror left and right. So you can see that I can improve the quality of the schematic. I can right click and then make mirror up down. Now you can see that the pump is in the direction going out. Now, although this doesn't have any impact on the model, it's just that it looks nice. So. Okay, so now I need to combine the overflow back into the anoxic zone. What I'll do is right click, disconnect, make the connection. Now I want the flow going into this input right here. Again, it, it looks a little disoriented. I would right click and mirror up and down. So you can see it looks a little bit better. Okay, so, so now we are just missing three three units. So when we go back to the flow elements right here, we have an effluent unit. We can bring that and connect it right here. We have a sludge unit. We can click on that, drag and drop and bring it right here. And then we need another sludge unit for our process unit. Now the model will work even if we didn't have those. But, but when we have those, it helps us track more information right, right here in this process unit. And it looks, looks neat. Okay. So this is our MLE configuration, simple. Now, one thing which we talked about was choosing the right model. So when we click on the anoxic reactor, we need to choose a calculated uh, DO model. So we would go to the options on the left hand side bottom, we'll click on the calculated and, and I think that's it, we are done. So for rest of them, we are using a default model. We can rename the side flow divider and call it VAS, waste, waste activated sludge. And we are ready to go forward. Okay, so the second step would be to go to the model setup. In the model setup, like I showed before in the slide, you can choose from having a one-step nitrification, denitrification. You can have two-step nitrification, denitrification. But we also have a simple oxygen requirement and sludge production model. We call it mini sumo. And, 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 it's, a, and, and it's a smaller model, but it allows you to do all the basic calculations which one would want to do. So if you have a big complex plant and you are just looking to do specific simple calculation, that's what the model you'll use. And you'll be surprised how, how fast Sumo is in simulating these conditions. Okay, 
So you see, we have a gas phase calculation. You can turn it on and off. I would, I, I'm not concerned about calculating uh, aeration of gas in this setting. So I would leave it off, leave it as input. Uh, I would skip pH calculation. And then at the bottom, you would see we have model parameters. So for this model, which is selected, it's called SUMO1. It's one step nitrification denitrification. We have key parameters identified for users. So when you click on the key parameters, you see a window on the right bottom side where you can define certain parameters which are part of the model, such as maximum specific growth rate of nitrifiers or half saturation of oxygen for nitrifiers or rate of hydrolysis. So these parameters are some of the key ones which we identified and have made it available for users. But if users are advanced and they want, they have data or information regarding more uh, variable parameters, then you can click on the bottom. There is a show all option. You click on that and then you get a full list of parameters which are part of the model. So for example, we have ordinary heterotropic kinetics. We have anoxic methanol utilizer kinetics. And, and so on and so forth. So all the kinetics and stoichiometry can be accessed from these model parameters right here. Okay, so if I go over to key parameters, you see on the right side, we have default values. Now these default values are coming from years and years of experience. Um, we have, we also provide place where users can input their values. So for example, uh, after doing some analysis, you identified that nitrification growth rate was half at your facility because of some industrial um, toxic compounds coming in. You can simply come to this window, type in, let's say, 0.45, press enter, and you see that this gets bolded. And then you see that the aerobic nitrifier or nitrifying organism kinetic also got bolded. So this gives you an indication when somebody else opens the file that this is where the changes are compared to default. Uh, you can you see there is a comment section on the right hand side and you'll notice that in Sumo in the input tab for every process unit you have these comment section. So you can just type anything you want. So basically what you'll type in is, okay, gathered from experiment, let's say. And now when we save the project, this gets saved with the file. Okay, so for now, I'll just revert back to point nine. And I will go into plant-wide calculation. Now, you, you remember we had some notes and in, in notes, basically what we wanted to show was, uh, there, there were some list of things which we wanted to do but the notes are present in the configure. They can also be brought up uh, from the, any, anywhere, any of the tabs in Sumo. So if you go to the options, sorry, view, and, and then you see there are notes at the bottom. And when you click on the notes, you can see that the notes pop up and you can magnify. So in this plant-wide calculation, we'll be setting up three things. We'll be setting up control SRT to five days for the plant. We'll set up a RAS calculation to 100% and internal recycle to 3Q. So we'll click on the sludge retention time, which you see on the left-hand side on top. And in this plant, we have two reactors we would like to calculate total SRT. So we can rename right here, call it total SRT, press enter. We can click on both the reactors simultaneously and then drag and drop them to the top of this equation. So, so we have a numerator now we want to include the mass of the sludge leaving the reactor. We would go back to the plant, click on the waste stage pump and drag and drop it right at the bottom. 
Now in our calculations, we can include TSS in the effluent as well. We would click on the effluent TSS and drag it to the bottom. Okay, now that's a, a way of calculating your total sludge retention time. But now remember, I explained that we want to control the SRT. So you see on the left-hand side, the target sludge retention time, we click right here. So you see that check come up and then we say we want this to be five days and that's it. Now, when we go to the input tab, you would notice that the wastage is, is controlled uh, based on how the SRT is maintained right here. Okay, so we want to create an aerobic SRT as well. So we would click again on the sludge retention time. Like I said, you can have multiple of these. You can rename aerobic SRT. You click on your aerobic tank. You bring it down here. And then we'll bring down the waste state as well. Now, in this case, I won't select the target SRT because the total SRT is what's controlling the flow of the pump. Now, what else did we want to do? So we wanted to do RAS to be 100% of the influent and internal recycle rate to be three times of the influent. Okay, so you see from many options, we have an option called proportional flow dependency. You would click on the proportional flow dependency. This allows you to define flows to be proportional to one another process units. You can double click and say, okay, this is where I define the RAS. So if you notice the equation, it, it prompts you some, some help. So it says drag and drop a process unit here with the flow you would like to set. So I want to set the RAS flow, which is in this clarifier. I'll click and I'll drag and drop it right here. And then this, and, and the flow I want it to be proportional to is the influence. So I'll click on the influent unit and I'll drag and drop it right here. So you see that the proportional variable, which is right here, is defined from the left-hand side of the uh, left-hand side window. So instead of 0.5, which is 50%, I would make this one. Now the RAS flow in this clarifier would be 100% of the influent flow. The second, thing which we wanted to add was internal recycle. So you can add a second proportional flow dependency by clicking on the proportional flow dependency tab. We would rename this to internal recycle IR. And similarly, so what is the flow we want to set? We want to set the internal recycle flow after the aerobic tank. So we click and then we drag and drop right here. And then we click on the influent and then we drag and drop it right here. So the proportional, again, we get to define from the left-hand side. We say we wanted it to be 300% or three times. So we'll, we'll simply change this from 0.5 to three. And that's it. You see, apart from these two, we have other options as well. This is where the controllers are present. So if I click, click on controllers, you can see that we have controller options right here. We have sum of variables. You can add different variables in different process units. We have a ratio of variable calculator. So for example, you can drag and drop your influent uh, and your effluent, and you'll be able to calculate the ratio, let's say removal ratios if you wanted. So apart from these pre-made features, uh, we also have a plant-wide Excel file. Uh, and this allows you to control or add equations however you want in Sumo everywhere. And, and we won't go into detail about that too much. Okay, so now the next step is going to the input setup. In the input setup, you see we have two options, constant and dynamic. So when I go to dynamic, you see that the bottom pane is different. It shows an option of pasting a table from clickboard. Uh, while when we go back to constant, it tells you what are the constant variables which you can choose from. 
to manipulate. So in the influent, on the left-hand side, you see we have influence specification. Uh, in the influence specification, you can choose, you can decide your flow, total COD, uh, TKN, TP, and temperature. When you click on the influent fractions, you can see these are the fractions which one needs to identify to include in SUMO based on measured data. And this is where the influent tool comes in handy. And the influent tool can be directly accessed from the bottom of the screen. So if you click on constants, influent, and then at the bottom of the screen, you see there is an influent tool. So when I click on this, an Excel sheet will open up, which is specific to that process unit. Okay, we're not gonna do that right now. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see we have show all option. You, when you click on show all, you can provide other information as well, which might be important for simulating the model. So without going into much detail, we would skip over to a different process unit. Uh, so in primary clarifier, depending on which clarifier we used, we in, in this case, we used a solids percentage removal. So we get to decide the removal efficiency 60% and the underflow sludge rate. Now we go to the anoxic tank. You can see we need to decide the volume and the volume right now is in cubic meter per day. However, if you click on the units right here, you can see we have many options. You can check um, million gallons or liters or gallons depending on with what you are comfortable with. So this is where you can choose or try to select specific units for specific things. However, if you want it, if for my friends in US uh, who are familiar with the US units, they, can, they have an option of changing and setting the default of Sumo to whatever they like. So right now, Sumo is set to an SI unit. When we go to the option tab on top, you see we have an option of unit system to choose from. In this case, we would change from SI to US units. And you would notice that uh, meter became feet, cubic meter, well, in this case, million gallons. On the left-hand side, you would notice that similar to influent and primary, we have many different parameters which are specific to that specific process unit. So with CSTRs, uh, with the reactors we have, you can define reactor settings, you can define aeration settings. Uh, we have advanced aeration settings for diffuser settings and stuff. Uh, let's click on the aeration setting for a moment. And you can see we have airflow rate in our calculated uh, CSTR. So we need to make this zero so that we make it anoxic. We go back to the reactor settings. We need to define an appropriate volume. And I, I, I see in the notes, I mentioned that we'll make the volume 0.8 million gallon. So that's what we'll do. 0.8, we go over to the anaerob aerobic tank and then we make this volume 1.8 with a DO set point of 2.5. So remember we were choosing an input DO model. So I would make the volume 1.8 and then on the left hand side, I would go to the aeration setting and then I would change this DO set point from two to 2.5. And that's it, and I think I'm done. Uh, when I click on the waste stage, you'll notice that this is highlighted as yellow. And when I bring my mouse, it says that this parameter is controlled by total SRT or aerobic SRT, one of those. So similarly for other pumps, it would show the same thing or it would be grayed out. So you can see in this case, it's grayed out. You can't define the underflow of the sludge uh, because that's controlled by in the parameter is controlled by the VAS setting which we created. When we go to the input uh, recycle pump, you can see that this is controlled by the internal recycle. So let's go to the output setup. And on the, in the output setup, you can choose from many tables, time charts, XY chart, pie chart, bar chart, and Sankey diagram to choose from. So in this case, I, I said that I'll use, I'll, I'll create a time chart 
for ammonia, nitrate, and then we'll record the ammonia value. Uh, the effluent TSS needs to be 15 milligrams for this example. So we will go back to the input setup, click on the clarifier, and make sure we change the effluent solids to 15 milligrams. Uh, and then we'll go to the output setup and simulate tab. Sorry, sorry, the output setup. And then we'll create a time chart first. So we'll click on the time chart. And you see a time chart appears at the bottom. You can add as many time charts as you want for different variables. You can rename the time, cha time chart to call it ammonia and nitrate. And I would plot ammonia and nitrate in the effluent of the plant. So I would click on my effluent process unit. On the left-hand side, you would notice that Sumo changes uh, the, the window to, to highlight variables in this specific process unit. So we have pre-made tables, but you can double, you can click inside, let's say the frequently used variable, and we would identify ammonia. So total ammonia, we'll click on it, and then we can drag and drop it to the screen. We'll go to the nitrate and nitrite on the left-hand side, and then we'll drag that. So you can, you can decide what to put on a specific time chart. We would create a table at this point. So let's, let's add a table. You can always rename the table as well. So mass balance. Now, the interesting thing about table is you can, you can click on influent, for example, and you see that right now we are inside the frequently used, but with the influent, when we click on the influent, you can, you can select any of these options. So I wanted to plot TSS, BOD, total nitrogen and total phosphorus. So I would click on frequently used. I see, okay, there is total COD. There is total BOD. And then I can do total nitrogen and total phosphorus. Now, these are the concentration. What if I wanted to plot the masses as well? So I can click on the port right here in the influent, and you see there is a different option uh, which shows up. It says concentration or mass flow of frequently used variables. So when I click on the mass flow, I can drag and drop similar to total COD concentration, total COD mass flow. I'll do the same for TSS actually as well. And total nitrogen and total phosphorus. Now you can see it automatically identified pipe two. If I was to go right here, uh, probably right here, show the name, it says pipe two. So I can rename the pipe. So you can actually plot everything in Sumo, such as concentration, mass flow, and you can plot what's in the variable, what's in the port, what's happening in the pipe. Now, if I wanted to look at the same variables in an anoxic tank, for example, all I need to do is click on the anoxic tank and drag and drop it right here. Click on aerobic tank, drag and drop it right here. And, and then same I can do for the effluent. Now, there are other options you can choose from, such as XY chart, pie chart, a bar chart, which is good for viewing the profile throughout the plant. You would add Sankey diagram. So, so you can choose to add a Sankey as well in, in, in Sumo. And I'll show you a quick, good example, how it's useful. Okay, so when we go over to the simulate tab, you would see that we have calculate steady state option and a reset option. We, when you go to the dynamic, you can see we can start the simulation. We can start the simulation after we do a steady state. You can reset the simulation to the initial condition, or you can even continue. Uh, this is where you define the stop time. So for example, if you want to do one day run versus doing a five day run or a, or a hundred day run, this is where you would define that and you can define data intervals. 
So let's, let's actually do a run. So when we go to the time chart and I want to do a steady state start. So you can see that it took at the bottom of the screen 0.6 seconds to do, to do simulation of a steady state and then a dynamic run of one day. So my ammonia concentration is 0.98 and my nitrate nitrite is 3.9 milligrams per liter. If we go over to the mass balance window, you would see that these are the variables which fill in with the steady state values. When we go to the Sankey, uh, let's say if we are interested in looking at mass of nitrate flowing through the system, you can again click on the influent. In, in the output setup, you can click on the influent port, click on the mass flow of frequently used, and then drag and drop in nitrate, nitrite mass flow. So you can see uh, the nitrate being disappeared from the anoxic tank, and you have nitrate in the aerobic tank, and then in the recycle. So the thickness defines how much mass there is. If you see there is a button, excuse me, on the left-hand side, when you click on this, you can see how different values are associated with different flows. And it tells you how much mass flow there is flowing through the system in this, in this system. Okay, so this was one simple example. If we go to the simulate tab, you can see at the bottom, we have a report option. So when you click on report, it will ask you, okay, where do you want to save this Excel sheet? Maybe in the desktop, I would say save. And then once the report is saved, it will ask you if you want to open it. So let's open it, yes. Okay, so like I said in the presentation, you have a complete report which gets generated, uh, which talks about the project overview. If I go to the notes section, you'll see that I had the notes written. So they appear as well, which means it, it is easier for clients and for engineers to transfer files and keep track of what they're doing. We have a sheet for the parameters which were modified. Uh, and then we have time charts with raw data. So, so you can actually use this to create your own graphs if you would like. Then mass balance table and then Sankey output as well. So along with that, we also provide information regarding each and every process unit. So for example, what we changed in the aerobic zone, we changed the volume and the dissolve oxygen set point. So all this information now is stored in the report. So let's see what we wanted to do more. Okay, so we, we did a steady state run in dynamic. What I wanted to highlight was, we, we would do a simple exercise of simulate, of splitting the aerobic tank into three tanks in series with equal volume. So we can show on simulation, the impact of having a plug flow reactor versus having a simple CSTR. So, and this pertains to how important hydrodynamics is when creating a configuration. So one thing before we move on, if I go to the output setup and the ammonia and nitrate time chart, I want you to see that the ammonia concentration is 0.918. So I would go back to my notes and I would say the ammonia concentration right here is 0.918 milligram nitrogen per liter. I'll save it by pressing control S. Bring them down. Now I'll go back to the configure tab. And all I'll do is I'll split the volume of this tank into three tanks in series. So what you can do is simply click on this tank, right click, copy, right click and then paste right click and paste so so now sumo remembers the exact settings of these three tanks we would disconnect 
and then just insert them right here. Okay. Now, in case we did a mistake, you can always undo. So if we, if I bring, if you look at my mouse, I go to the edit and you can see we have an undo option as well. You can either say control Z or you can simply press right here and it will undo the changes you did. We'll go back to the plant wide setup because we updated our configuration. We want to make sure our total SRT still makes sense. Okay, so we are missing these two tanks. We would add these two tanks. You can select them together, drag and drop at the bottom. We would do the same thing for the aerobic SRT as well. Drag and drop at the bottom. And then we'll go to the input setup. And in the meantime, Sumo is looking at if we is compiling the simulation, making sure whatever things we did make sense. So if I go back to my notes here in Sumo, I would see, okay, we split the aerobic tank. We would make the volume to 0.6 million gallons. We'll, we updated the SRT calculation. And then we'll look and, and see how the ammonia concentration gets impacted. So now one interesting thing about Sumo is that you can select all three of these reactors together and go to the reactor settings and change the volume at once by 0.6. Now, if I go to these reactors individually, you will see that each of them have the same volume. And this helps when you have uh, a lot of different CSTRs in one configuration. All right. So we see that Sumo is ready for simulation. We would go to the output setup and then to the simulate. And we'll do another steady state start. OK. Uh, you can see that the ammonia level decreased from 0.9 to 0.337. This suggests, this shows that the total SRT is the same of the plant. Okay, maybe, maybe I will show you where the SRT calculation is placed, how you can identify it. When we go to the output setup, uh, we would click on a table and you see on the left hand side, we have option of sumo, then plant, and then aerobic reactor because we have that reactor selected. Let's click on the plant. So we have plant wide uh, as an option. If I click on the plant wide, then you would see that I have total SRT and aerobic SRT. I would drag and drop the total SRT. So the total SRT, you remember, we made sure it was five days. No. So now our SRT is five days. Our reactor volumes are same, but our ammonia concentration is lower from 0.9 to 0.3. And this is how important hydrodynamics is in a plant configuration. All right. Uh, one more thing I would like to show you before we move on to a controller example is how to include dynamic, uh, dynamic flow. So if I go to the input setup, I would click on the influent and I would click on the influent tool, which is at the bottom. So the influent tool is being, is an Excel sheet which is available uh, for everyone in, in each Sumo model. So if you have multiple process in, in influent process units, uh, you will have multiple of these sheets. Uh, this is where you get to define the data and then you can estimate the fractions which can be used for, uh, for input to the model. And I'll, I won't go through the, uh, through the sheet, but what I will show you that there is a tab called the urinal flow. I would click there and, and there is a flow, dynamic flow, which is pre-installed. Uh, pre-made table. So you can see there is a time reference, there is a unit reference, and then the variable name. 
So the variable name is Q in this, uh, in, in this case, and then we define the unit, cubic meter per day. Okay, but how do we get these exact uh, uh, symbol and units in place? When I go back to Sumo and I click on the influent, because that's where the flow is, I click on the influent specification. You see that there is a flow rate. I can, when I, when I bring my mouse, you see the Q shows up. So either I can type in what shows up or I can simply right click and copy the symbol. I can do the same thing for the units as well. So if I bring my mouse over to the unit, I can right click and copy the unit and then paste it in an Excel. Now, because I have this pre-made table, I, I would just copy this pre-made table and you can see the unit of time is hours. This can be days as well. And simply go to Sumo, click on the desired process unit where you want to change a variable dynamically, click on the dynamic. So you, you have to have both selected and then you would simply paste table from the clipboard and that's it. So you would see that a blue emoji shows up, which shows that, okay, something is dynamically changing. And when you go to this window, you can see it's the flow. Now, the units and the symbols are very important to be exact. So that's why you can get it directly from Sumo by copying. But if, if, you, if you include million gallons per day instead of cubic meter per day, like I did, it would recognize the same thing. Okay. Uh, now, because this is a 23 hour cycle of flow, I want to repeat the cycle every day. All I need to do is to click on this window right here. And there is a check which appears and it says repeated every, and I define 24 hours. So now this cycle would get repeated every 24 hours. So similar to influent flow, you can change total COD, TKN, you can have multiple tables, uh, you can right click, you can disable this table, run with a constant flow, you can enable this table back, you can delete it, you can rename the table to so this, I can call flow, and you can see the flow, the name changed. Uh, now I would go back to the output setup. And then what I want to do is I want to plot the flow of the influent as well. So I click on the time chart and I would simply click on frequently used variable on the left hand side and then select flow. When I go to the simulate tab, you remember we already did a steady state calculation. So now all we need to do is a dynamic run. So we would, we define the stop time. In this case, it's one day right now. So we would simply click on start. But if we wanted to extend this to, let's say 10 days, we can simply change the stop time to 10 days and then restart the run, or we can just continue. So the, so the previous one day remains on the chart and then it continues for more nine days. So this is a simple, uh, simple uh, way of setting up dynamic flow in, in Sumo. Now you can also import uh, the data into time charts and it can be done in a similar format. So if I was to simply go back and copy this table right here, go back to Sumo, right click, go, go to the output setup, tab, right click on this time chart and say, okay, I want to import data. I click on import data and then I paste and then press okay. So now you can see that I was able to import the data and the data was only for 23 hours, obviously. So that's how it shows up. And the, 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 the reason it shows up like this is because of the units of 
my influent flow, which are in million gallons per day. So I can simply adjust that if I wanted. So SI, and then you can see this is cubic meter per day. All right, so this is a simple way of setting up a dynamic simulation, uh, uh, importing data dynamically. One more interesting thing to show here would be the ammonia and the uh, nitrate values. So right now you can see the dynamic impact on the ammonia concentration and the nitrate in the effluent. And this has a lot to do with the internal recycle of the plant. So if I wanted to, let's say scenario analysis where I'm, I'm, I want to change the internal recycle, or if I wanted to just change the internal recycle and look at the impact on nitrate, I can go back to my plant-wide setup and find wherever the equation is for internal recycle. Right now, the proportional is three times. Let's say I want to make it two and see what happens to my nitrate concentration. I change this value to two. I come back to simulate. And then I can either choose to do a start where the simulation would start from a new data set point using the previous uh, pre previous values as initial values, or I can simply continue on the same chart to see the impact. So I changed it from 10 to 20 days and continued. And you can see that the nitrate concentration went up in the upper, and that's the impact of your internal recycle being lower. All right, so this is a typical way of setting up SUMO. Um, I hope I've showed you almost most of the features which I wanted to at this point. And, and now we will quickly look at an example, pre-made example of how a controller is set up. So you can either choose from one which is in the example, or I would choose the one which I already saved on the desktop. Okay, so this is one of the examples of setting up uh, ammonia-based aeration control. And here you're setting up a cascade controller uh, in, this, in, in this particular example, while the influent is dynamically changing. So you can see we have specific notes one can follow in, in, in few of the examples. So that can help you assist and understand how some of the configurations are set up. Now, when we go over to the plant-wide setup, uh, you see that similar to the SRT calculation, the RAS flow, there is an equation which showed up, which I explained in the previous, uh, in, in the previous slides. You can click on the controller and you can choose which controller to choose from. The controller shows up on, in Sumo, and then you can define the manipulated and the controlled variable. So in, in this particular window, the, the control variable is in the effluent, and we have ammonia as our control variable, while our manipulated variable is the set point which we are trying to identify, excuse me, identify in the second controller to control the airflow rate. So the first controller identifies a set point for DO based on the ammonia concentration set point we want. And then the second controller is set up to change the oxygen concent the airflow rate to match that DO. And, and, and this is how one can set up a cascade controller in Sumo. When we go to the input setup, and if I click on ammonia in DO setup, P controller right here, you can see that we have option of switching the controller on and off. You can identify the set point, you can provide initial values, you can provide the direction of the controller, 
uh, and a direction of the controller is very important. So a negative one means that the, the direction of the controller is inverse, meaning that when a manipulated variable is going up, the control variable will go down. And that's an inverse controller. Now, if your manipulated variable goes up and your control variable also goes up, that's a direct control. So for example, when aeration goes up, ammonia levels would go down because more nitrification, that's an inverse. Then airflow goes up, the DO goes up, that's a direct control. Okay, on the left-hand side, you see we have other options such as gains to identify. So like I said, we have this pre-setup example. We go to the output, output sheet, we go to the simulate tab, and in the simulate tab, I would look at the effluent ammonia concentration. And in this case, I would do a dynamic run. So I go to dynamic, I do a three day run. So I start. So you can see at the bottom, the black line is basically the control set point of 0.75. And the red is the ammonia trying to meet that under the dynamic flow. And, and this is how you would set up a controller and implement it in Sumo. Okay, now we would go back uh, to the presentation. Okay, so the summary is that, you know, we are one of the most economical uh, softwares which are out there. Uh, we include controllers as well as part of the package. Uh, you can see that the simulation speed was pretty fast. Uh, we have several models from simple to complex and depending on the complexity and how simple you use, you can improve uh, how fast you wanna run your simulation. But in overall, we are one of the fastest uh, simulators out there. Uh, we have most updated and calibrated model library. One of the most advanced one, which I'll share a case study right now is on BioP for SiteStream eBPR. Uh, we are very flexible. Dynamically, for example, we can change fractions, we can change volume of the tanks, a lot of different variables, uh, but also we can connect to OPC servers. Uh, and then obviously we have scenario analysis, which is part of the package. And right now I would like to say that obviously everybody available on the call is free to download Sumo from dynamita.com slash downloads. And although we said that first 50 people who register will get one month free license, I think we would keep this open to everyone on this call. Whoever is interested, please download Sumo, install Sumo, send us the machine uh, identification code and we will give you a one month license for free for trial. So anybody who's interested in using Sumo, uh, or trying it out, we, we would let, we would give them a license. So just email us. Okay, so finally, I would like to take you through a quick case study. Now this case study is very interesting. It, it's the Virginia Initiative plant, which is in uh, Virginia. It's owned and operated by Hampton Roads Sanitation District. And in this model, Basically, you can clearly see the impact of temperature on BioP performance. Now, for every study, uh, every modeling study we do, or we recommend that you follow the, some of the guidelines which are out there. For this one, we followed the WEF's guideline for IWA guideline for activated sludge model, a good modeling practice where we go through identifying the project definition, we go through data collection, reconciliation, making sure the data is making sense. Some of the simple checks, for example, ammonia cannot be more than PKN. That's one of the simplest one. Then we do, we set up the model, we calibrate it according to their guidelines and then simulate and interpret the results. Okay, so the, in 2000, till 2016, the uh, Hampton Roads uh, op owned and operated a VIP facility which had three, uh, three stage VIP process. It had influent with a primary clarifier and then it has an anaerobic and anoxic zone followed by an aerobic zone. 
And recently, in, uh, they added a versatile bioreactor where any of the tanks can be changed into either anoxic or aerobic operation based on the carbon dosage. And the goal of the project was to basically simulate the impact of, uh, basically simulate the performance of the plant after the upgrade was done. So in the VIP plant, which is situated in Norfolk, it, uh, the design load was 40 million gallon per day. Uh, <clears throat> there is an anaerobic, anoxic, aerobic zone followed by the VBR. And then there is side stream treatment for treating the scrubber water. They have incinerators which produce scrubber water, which can be toxic. So they have side stream treatment uh, where they do, they put their sludge from the mainstream into the nitrification enhancement facility and they treat the scrubber water and recycle it back to the head of the plant. They have a centrifuge for uh, producing cake solids at the facility. Okay, so we, after going through an extensive uh, data collection and data reconciliation, uh, one of the important things we identified was the impact of temperature and impact of VFA concentration that can have on reproducing the bio P performance of a plant. Uh, we know that not every facility measures VFA, uh, especially those facilities which are interested in bio P. Uh, they do it more frequently than others, but still not frequently enough. So based on temperature and frequent data which they collected about VFA, we identified there to be a correlation between temperature and the VFA concentration in the influent. Their temperature in the influent varied from 13 degrees Celsius to up to 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, and, and their VFA ranged from anywhere from 12 milligrams to 70 milligrams. So using this correlation, which you see on the top, we were able to identify what the fractions should be for VFA based on correlation with temperature, because temperature, we have daily measurements, more frequent measurements. We were able to estimate what the VFA fraction looks like. So, so based on this correlation, we established from their data, you can see that as the temperature starts to go up, which is the red line, the VFA concentration starts to go up as well in the influent. Now having the temperature and VFA can be very crucial, like I said, for uh, simulating your BioP performance. One thing to note would be that the total RBCOD or readily biodegradable COD fraction compared to total COD remain constant. However, the levels of VFA or non-VFA organics, which are biodegradable and soluble was changing. So this is how the model configuration looked like. We have an influent with grid tank, followed by primary clarifiers, two anaerobic tanks. Uh, we have four anoxic zones, uh, four aerobic zones, and then we have eight cells, which are the VBR, the versatile bioreactor, where any of the tanks can either be anoxic or aerobic, and that is controlled based on dosage where it turned on and off. Blood from the facility ends up in the NEF, NEF meaning the Nitrification Enhancement Facility, uh, where we are treating nitri incinerator scrubber water. And then underflow uh, goes to a dewatering unit, while the overflow goes back to the head of the plant. So the red boxes which you see are basically the dynamic inputs which we had to do uh, include in the simulation to reproduce the performance. So for example, for influent, the influent load is very important to change dynamically because they were interested in simulating three years worth of performance in, in Sumo. So we were changing flow, total COD, TKN, and so on and so forth, including temperature and VFA concentration, like I said. Uh, then in the primary clarifier, we were changing the underflow the measured underflow uh, based dynamically. And you can imagine over the period of three years, a plant goes through a lot of the operational changes in terms of having a tank offline, 
So we had a facility to change volume as well as we went along. Then the RC pump, which is a recycle from an anoxic to an aerobic tank, the recycle from an aero aerobic to an anoxic tank, which is the NRC, the carbon dosage, the controllers. So this was a full-fledged uh, model, which was calibrated to a lot of dynamic input. So the calibration approach to begin with was simple, making sure, like I explained in the example, having the correct hydrodynamics, making sure you have correct number of tanks in series, you, making sure your flow distribution is correct, and, and focusing on your influent characterization. Uh, garbage in means garbage out. So the bad data you give the model, uh, the bad results you're gonna get. And in 90% of the time, from my experience, I've noticed that if you do a good enough job in characterizing the influent, then you would uh, basically calibrate your model uh, quite nicely. The biokinetic parameters, the, these are relatively stable and we did not have to change any of them and use defaults. So the calibration steps were, we, I did, we looked at sludge production, okay, if it made sense, nitrification, denitrification performance, and finally the biop. Okay, so the graphs you see on your screen are showing the mixed liquor concentration on top for three years. Now the simulation took only uh, one hour to do three years of this much of dynamic data. So you can understand how, how the simulation speed is. Um, and and that at the bottom you can see is the sludge retention time. So both in case of mixed liquor and sludge retention time, we are able to well reproduce the model without having to change any of the uh, kinetic and bio, uh, kinetic or stoichiometric parameter just based on having to set up the model correctly. The effluent total nitrogen and, and the nitrate concentration that you see at the bottom, the red, the dots mean that th those are data and the lines are the simulated results. So you can see on top, they started off in 2000, after 2016 and 2017, the total nitrogen is higher, close to 0.9 milligram, nine milligrams in the effluent. And then slowly over the period of three years, they have come down to four milligrams or three milligrams in a lot of these cases. So the top graph is total nitrogen and the bottom is nitrate concentration in the effluent. Okay. Finally, uh, we moved, once we did the basic check on sludge production, the hydrodynamics, the nitrification, denitrification, we wanted to pay attention to the EBTR model and making sure, you know, the BioP performance is quite good. And in SUMO, we have introduced a two population model. We have PAOs and GAOs. And uh, so that we can uh, simulate the impact of high temperature, which favors GAO population over PAOs, and we can simulate side stream treatment of uh, in BioP where under a low ORP condition, PO, PAO have an advantage of fermenting. So these two are the important changes which were made in the model. And we also looked at the erroneous coefficient of storage, uh, the growth rate of PAOs, so to give GAOs an advantage at high temperature and glycogen storage was improved for GAOs based on temperature. Okay, so the top graph which you just saw is the VFA concentration changing dynamically and the temperature changing dynamically in red. So you can see the temperature goes from 13, about 15 uh, degrees Celsius to 30 milligrams uh, during three, P, three uh, years. So you can see the cycle. So what we were interested in to see if we can reproduce the impact of temperature on the, the shifting population, shifting BioP population one would expect. So if you look at bottom, the blue line represents OHO, uh, the, the red line represents PAOs, while the uh, green line represents GAOs. So if you focus on day zero to day 300, as the temperature starts to go up, the PAO population, which is in red, is starting to go down while GAO starts to go up. And then they fluctuate. Uh, 
GAO goes up when the temperature up is up above 25 and reaching 30 degrees C, while PAO goes down. And then PAO starts to pick up when the temperature starts to go down again. So this is a very important thing to be able to simulate using this model when, when you're trying to calibrate or understand your BioP performance. Because not having the two PAO GAO model, not having the impact of temperature clearly, not having this ability for PAOs to ferment under low ORP condition, you won't be able to simulate the concepts which we understand in these processes. And, and finally, uh, they, during summer, we notice a big peak of OP concentration, which they measure in the effluent of the plant. And the model is able to reproduce the, the, the OP concentration based on this shifting population. Mm -hmm. so, the hydrodynamics and the influent characterization is important. VFA load is important. And this PAO GAO model with impact of temperature can be essential to reproduce the impact on BioP performance. Okay, well, uh, this was the end of the case study. I hope you enjoyed um, the demo. Uh, you learned a lot about Sumo features. And if you have and all of your questions answered through the chat window by my colleagues, in case you have any questions, comments, suggestions, uh, and if you're interested in using Sumo, feel free to write to us at tanush at dynamita.com and support at dynamita.com. Uh, I see we have uh, five minutes um, to spare. So just so that I don't uh, cut off before everybody has put their questions into the chat window. I don't know, Imri, if you are there. Uh, I would wait maybe a few seconds to see. If not, then I would be happy to close this call in in next 30 minutes. So I thank you all for joining and feel free to ask us any questions you might have. Okay. Okay, I, I guess I, I don't hear from anyone. So um, good luck everybody and thanks for joining in and stay safe. Bye-bye.